In this episode, I'm going to show you how to find Cave 7. If you've never heard of it, this is where the famous cowboy archaeologist Richard Wetherill first discovered evidence of the basket maker culture back in 1893, one of the most important discoveries in the history of Southwest archaeology. First, a couple of details. Even though this hike is inside Bears Ears National Monument, it's in the part that is on National Forest land, so no hiking permit is required at the present time. Any car can make it to the trailhead in good weather. The hike is approximately four miles out and back and is rated as moderately difficult. Our starting point is Shirttail Junction, where Utah Highway 95 begins. This is three miles south of Blanding, Utah, on Highway 191. Heading west on Highway 95, it's approximately 6.3 miles to a right turn at the sign for Cottonwood Road, also known as San Juan County Road 228. This road starts off paved, but quickly turns to well-maintained gravel after about a mile. There is one stream crossing to contend with. It's normally dry, but when flooded, it may be impassable. You'll stay on Cottonwood Road for 4.9 miles and bear left on Elk Ridge Road, then continue another 5.8 miles to the trailhead. This makes it a total of 10.7 miles after turning off Highway 95. There are numerous campsites on Cottonwood Road. These are boondocking sites where you can camp free for up to 14 days, but most have no cell phone reception. Along the way, you'll pass through about two miles of ute land that is well marked with no trespassing signs. At 10.7 miles from Highway 95, look for a small parking area on the left. This is the unmarked trailhead for the Over Under Ruins, which is a pretty collection of cliff dwellings and rock art at the head of Whiskers Draw. It's a short, easy hike to the Overlook, but a bit more challenging to get down there. Cave 7 is in Whiskers Draw, so follow the spine of white rock down until you reach a rock cairn indicating the trail that goes to the bottom. It's approximately nine-tenths of a mile from the parking area down to the Over Under Ruins. Once you reach the bottom and pay a visit to the Over Under Ruins, continue downstream in Whiskers Draw for approximately one mile and look for a small side canyon on the right. Cave 7 is only about 150 yards or so up this little side canyon. Walk up as far as you can and you'll come to the Pastel Ruin, which has a beautiful alcove directly underneath it. A lot of people actually mistake this alcove for Cave 7, which is on the left side of the stream bed just before you reach the Pastel Ruin. To get inside, you'll have to scramble up a steep bank. Cave 7 looks like nothing from the stream bed, but once you get up there, it turns out to be bigger than it looked from below. The full story of Cave 7 is told in the book Cowboys and Cave Dwellers, Basket Maker Archaeology of Utah's Grand Gulch by Blackburn and Williamson. What rather ill found here were the skeletons of 97 people, most of them adult males, with many showing signs of having died violently. Today, there are no burials or artifacts to be found in Cave 7 because the Weatherill expedition fully excavated the entire cave, digging down over six feet deep. The skeletons were removed and sold to museums and universities, as was the practice of the day. Amazingly, today, it's almost impossible to tell that this cave was ever excavated because the next year they came back and restored the site by backfilling it. There is one small dwelling in the far corner of the cave. This structure and the pastel ruin were both built approximately 1,000 years after the basket makers. So it's doubtful the people who lived in these structures even realized the burials were there. If you enjoy exploring ancient ruins as much as we do, be sure to check out our ebooks on Southeast Utah and Sedona, Arizona.